So when I did announcements, I forgot to mention you guys. Um, these declarations, the ones that just say, uh, I'm chosen, I am holy, I am righteousness, if some of those things, if they can't roll off of your tongue, then you want to have a freedom training for you guys. So the very first time I heard someone said, you are holy, I looked behind me because I never heard that. I had accepted Jesus Christ in my heart, but I didn't know who I was in Christ. So when they said, you are holy, I was like, who, who's back there? Mm -hmm. And then I realized it was me. And you know, God's so kind. Because at that moment I realized that the things that I had been doing were not lining up with who I am. Amen. Yeah? Amen. I don't have to manage my behavior if I know who I am. Because if I'm holy, I don't do unholy things. It's not a trying. I don't have to force myself. It's just who I am. And it was really weird. I actually, I wasn't speaking anything. Um, this is a little bit later on in my testimony. But I was talking to somebody, and I was just having a very regular conversation. But the demon in that person looked at me and said, quit being so holy. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> we'll just move on. I didn't know what to do with it, but I knew that that thing was identifying holy. Not because of me, but because of who God is. Thank yeah? You. yeah? It's who God is in you. So when you know you are his holiness, you are his holiness, then when you have a choice, you just go, oh, well, I'm his holiness. I know my choice. It's not even a choice. Yeah? Are you with me? Yes? <laughs> you guys are like, I'm not talking to you today. Okay, so we are going to have, this is all by faith. But we are going to have a training for you. If you can't say some of these things without, like I was crying and weeping, then you probably need to spend some time with me on my living room floor, because it's good for you. And we're going to have some freedom training. Now, you can come to me and tell me Friday night works for me or Saturday works for me. And based on who tells me what, then we'll come up with a date, okay? So that's what I was supposed to say before announcements, but I forgot. So... Amen. Here we Amen. go. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome. So right now, would you stand with me one more time? And if you have your Bibles, if you would just raise them with me. We want to just always give God glory for his word because it is the foundation of everything that we are. Father, we thank you for your word that is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit. Thank you that all scripture is God-breathed and inspired, useful for teaching in your righteousness. Amen. Amen. And with those same Bibles, would you turn to Ephesians 6? We're going to work out of there today. This is an all very familiar passage for a lot of us, but we want to look at it from a different perspective today. Titled today, Stand... But it's really the battle before the battle. And you'll see what I mean in a second. Let's begin reading verse 10. We're going to just read verse 10 through 20. And then we'll kind of get into our discussion and see what God does. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the schemes of of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your faith your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. 
and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That's what we were declaring earlier. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. We're not talking today specifically about the armor of God. We're not going to discuss it. But what I do want to get into is what it all means and what it's all about. But before we even get into this, most of us don't recognize the importance of what Paul wrote prior to these verses we just read. We almost want to look at them as two separate things. Because in the, prior to this, he talks about a husband and wife relationship. Then after that, he talks about parenting, child-parent relationship. Then he talks about um, uh, working relationships, slave, masters, laborers, <coughs> owner relationship. And we kind of say, okay, this is about relationships, and this is about the armor of God, and about the enemy's darts and all this stuff. We would be tremendously missing the boat if we miss out on the importance of why those relationships and the description of how these relationships should be under God. And I'm going to let you read that for yourself. Come into play here. Because let's be honest. How many of us, and maybe there are some, but not too many, who one day literally saw a physical manifestation of a demon or an evil spirit show up in their face and say, I'm going to get you today. How many of us have actually had that happen? Some of us have, but not everyone. And I'm not talking about in human form. I'm talking about physical demon. Some of us have been attacked that way. But that's rare. Where does the enemy come in to attack us? Think about it. Where does he come in? What's the most ten timid? What's the most um, tender relationship that we have and doors that the enemy attacks us with. People who are important in our lives. If you're a married couple, where do you think the enemy wants to get you first? What's his first po possible doorway? Through your relationship with each other. Get ticked off at your wife. Get ticked off at your husband. Get angry at them. What happens when you get angry and then you let your, the sun go down on your anger that the Bible tells us not to do? We've opened a doorway while we sleep for the enemy to come in and play games with our uh, thoughts, play head games with us. So now we're letting that stew. And what have we done? We didn't have an armor on. So what do we do? We let him come in. So now that's a scheme of the enemy. The enemy is not going to necessarily show up where you can clearly see him and, oh my gosh, here's the enemy with a big sword and a sledgehammer. He's going to show up in things and in people and situations that are important to you. Get angry at your kids or have your kids come into your home carrying something and you don't have your armor on and, and then that door is open and now it's infested in your home and you're wondering, why is this happening in my home? How about your work life? Your boss tells you something to do or a co-worker starts talking smack about you and says things about you that aren't true. Now there's division. Now there's tension. Now you're developing anger and hurt which opens the door for bitterness. And, and, the, and all these things, the, the spirit of anger, the spirit of bitterness, the spirit of hate. Now you start thinking negatively. And instead of carrying the presence into your workplace where we're supposed to change the atmosphere, now we've become succumb to it and we begin to wallow in a defeated state. Woe is me. Why is this happening? And now, not just wallow, we become a part of it. We become 
joined in in the scheme of the enemy because we're feeding into it instead of coming against it. So these relationships are so important because they're the doorway, the primary doorway the enemy will use to get to you. He will get you. This is your weakness. Your kids are your weakness. Your spouse is your weakness if you don't have your full armor on. Your relationships at work are your weakness if you don't have your full armor on. If you're not on the bed. And anyone who's raising a teenager or has raised a teenager knows the battle that's taking place. Okay? You better have your armor on. So these relationships are so key. This is why Paul puts them here. He's telling you, do this God's way. And part, by doing these things God's way, you're gearing yourself up to overcome in the way God has called us to overcome. You're minimizing the doorway or the avenues or the weak spots that you may have. And then whatever weak spots you still do have, you put on that full armor and now they're covered. Now you're protected. So these relationships are key to what's going on here. Friends will hurt you. People will hurt you. They're not perfect. But, and it's funny, one of the things we were with some people last night when we talked about being offended. You can choose to be offended. I can choose to let your words or your attitude affect my response or my emotion. Or I can, in my armor, in, with Christ in me, I can go, sorry. I know who I am. Like what we just read, those declarations. I know my identity. What you say about me, that ain't true. I know who I am in Christ. I know who's in me. And that he is greater than me is out there. And whatever he tries to do, I got it. Because he who is in me is helping me taking care of it. That I am still going to change the atmosphere. No matter what the atmosphere looks like. Okay? Now, as I share this with you, and I'm speaking now, understand it. I'm learning this too. This is a process we all go through. He's teaching us how to prepare for the battle because the battle doesn't start when you put your... The battle starts in choices you make before you put the armor on. Let me say that again. The schemes of the enemy are what they are. But your battle with him doesn't start when, oh, he's coming, let me put my arm on. It starts before you even put on anything. That's where the battle, and that battle takes place up here. It takes place in your mind, it takes place in your will, and in your emotions. That's what our soul is, a mind, will, and emotion. That's where the battle, and I'll show you how this works. Because the way Paul set that it's up, it's not a coincidence. It's where it is. Because if someone is any one of us, and we can hurt in relationship that lead to negative emotions or mindsets or attitudes, all of a sudden the enemy has a way. So God is saying, cheer up, start this fight. See, I want to talk a little bit about this. But before I get into that, I want to show you something. When Paul describes in verse 12 that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Those things, and, and depending on the version of the Bible, it may describe them slightly differently. But that's a hierarchy. He's kind of giving you a hierarchy of where the attacks come from. Principalities is more like a governing or physical authority, human authority. Powers are those who had, who had powers given to them, um, like fallen angels. Um, or just evil spirits on a lower level. 
then it gets to the next level. The rulers um, that preside over regions, regional spirits. And if you want to know about that, read in Daniel. You know, when Daniel prayed and when the angel came back with an answer, 21 days later, he said, why, why did it take you so long? I was battling, you know, uh, Satan up here. So there's regional spirits that go on in the air. And then um, the last one, spirits the host of wickedness, they're, they're more of even high, a greater authority in terms of demonic realm. And I don't want to get too deep into this, but I just want to touch base so you're aware that this is what he's describing. There's so many layers you know, to the attack and how they come. They can come in the natural, which is the lowest layer, which is through people, or they can come in other ways, in different ways to oppress you. So he's saying, get ready for this battle before. So I want to look at a little bit of word study here as we talk about this. Because he he begins, after he declares these things, he says in verse 13, take up the whole armor that you may be able to... I'm sorry. In, In verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. So this is the first stand that he talks about. What does it mean? This stand literally means to make a conscious decision that you're going to stand up and you're going to fight. Makes a conscious decision to stand, to, to that this is my ground. I'm holding strong in this ground. Okay? He tells us, be strong. What does that mean to be strong? It means to be filled. The word literally means be filled with a Holy Spirit's power. The power from on high. So when he says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, he's saying that when you stand, you're not standing on your own strength. But when you make a conscious choice, this is where my will comes into play. Me choosing to align my heart with what God has established in heaven. Coming along to with what God is doing. I choose to be filled with His power so that I will stand. So I made that decision to stand in this place, to gear up for battle, but I am standing not because, oh man, I'm, you know, I go to the gym and I work out and I can fight this. I'm standing because I am filled and covered by the Spirit of God and in His presence. I've been anointed. I've been called. I've been prayed up. And I know who's in me. It's a a recognition of aligning my heart with the heart of heaven. So, okay, I'm going to stand this ground because I can in him, not my own strength. So I need him to stand. And again, he kind of, in a weird way, if you really look at this whole passage, he kind of says the whole armor is for you to be able to do all these things. So you gain your victory. So he describes the armor after he tells you what we're supposed to happen, what's supposed to happen when we do things his way. So I stand here against the wiles of the enemy. So now I'm seeing the schemes coming. So I make the choice. Okay, enemy, your schemes are coming. I'm going to combat your schemes with the Spirit of God. So... Oh, I see my son coming in. He's getting high every night. Uh Uh-uh. Holy Spirit, this ain't happening. How are we going to fight this, Holy Spirit? This is my home. I'm standing on this ground. How are we going to do this? Oh, okay. I'm going to go anoint his bed. I'm going to anoint his room with power. I'm going to confront the enemy. I'm going to pray the pain off the walls. If I have to... Uh, lay down a boundary and say, you cannot co- come into this house like this. I'm going to do that. But Holy Spirit, I'm not doing it out of emotion. I'm doing it out of my passion. But I'm going to do it in you, according to your word. That I am, as a parent, my son's covering. Therefore, I have authority over him and what comes against him. So I take authority and I pray, and I anoint, and I stand 
in being strong in the power of whose might? His might. Right? His might. Same thing in any relationship that comes at you. You make that decision to receive power from on high to be able to continue to hold the ground. So that's the first thing. See, God is doing these things. He is willing to do these things in and through us. But we have to want to and be willing to be a part of it. Okay? What happens in most cases? A lot of times we kick them out or we just let it go. And make excuses and enable them, right? Neither one is the way God would handle it. And would want us to handle it. Remember, Joshua declared, as for me and my house, we'll worship the Lord. You can't worship the Lord and the enemy too. So you've got to cleanse it. But you do it the way God has called us to do it in who we are in Him, in His power. That's how we stand in this sense. The sense here is that it is a willing readiness to put on the armor to fight. This first stand. It's a determined state of mind. I make a choice to fight spiritually versus just giving in and letting go. And then he says, take up the armor. The, word, the definition in Greek for take up is take up, raise, pick up, take on, carry off, lead away. It's an offensive mindset and heart set. I'm not playing defense, so now I've stood my ground. But see, in taking this ground, I'm not being defensive. I am being offensive. If I am praying for my son to get off the addiction stuff, I'm not being defensive to go and take, him, take that stuff away from him. I'm saying, Lord, get him back. I want my child back. My child, I prayed my child in. My child is a child of the king as I am a child of the king. My child belongs to you. I am their his covering. I want him for the kingdom. You've called him. You've anointed him. He's got a purpose and a plan in his life. You have not given up on me. You've not given up on him. I went wayward. You brought me back. You're going to bring him back. You're fighting to get gain, not hold ground. Same thing in marriage relationships. You've called us together. What God has separated, I mean, what God has put together, no man can separate in two. So, Lord, I'm fighting for my marriage. I don't want just the status quo for her or him to like me. I'm taking my ground because this is my wife. This is my husband. This is what you desire. You, we are stronger together in you than we are apart. It's... That willingness to do this. This is the battle before you even put the armor on. To want to do this, not give up. My heart's been very, very heavy in the, over the last six months. Over this. And I didn't realize how much, to be honest with you, it's been heavy over this. How many, many people, not one or two, many people I've encountered who basically quit the fight before the fight even began. You know, I remember back in the 90s when Mike Tyson was world champion in boxing. And I remember that the, the, the fight was actually lost by his opponent to the belt of the land. He came out, he, you, and when the camera shot went to his opponent, you can tell they were already scared. They were already petrified of him. Even before the bell rang, before they even announced the participants. You wasted the 75 bucks for the, for the paid pay-per-view for nothing. Because it, it was done in 30 seconds. That's what the enemy wants to do. Intimidate us that we are powerless against him. When God says, take up your whole armor. Put it on. Be strong, not in yourself, in me, and in the power of my might to accomplish these things. You can't do this on your own. You got to do it in my might. So stand up. Get your butt up and fight. Do everything you need to do 
to, to do this. Get hungry. Get, want this. I mean, I remember when I was struggling years ago with my, in my faith where I backslidden from the Lord. When God began to turn me and I recognized I need to start fighting for this. I went to every Bible study I could find. I went to every time the church was open, I was there. I was there early for prayer. I was at everything because I needed to. That's how I fight. I needed to. You don't wait till things get desperate. Because if I'm standing in his power and in his might, it never gets desperate. I am never desperate in him. Okay? I am called victorious more than a conqueror in him. Not you are a desperate person in him. No. The only times I am ever desperate is when I needed Jesus before I met Jesus. That's the only desperation that I ever was. Because once I have Jesus, I'm no longer desperate. I want more of him, but I don't operate from a place of desperation. I operate from a place of victory. And again, I'm learning this too, guys, because human emotions goes all over the place, and we're emotional beings. But this is what he's asking us to do. So take up, put on. Matthew 11, 12 says this, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and violent men take it by force. That means you're going to be in a fight. Jesus was in a fight. How did he fight when he was in the desert 40 days? With the word of God. And in the power of that came through the word of God. See, there was power in your declarations today. Some of you may have felt it and received it. Others could have had a hard time receiving those power because that was scripture you declared over yourself. It wasn't just words. It wasn't feel-good word statements. That was scripture. And there's power in his word. But some of us had a hard time receiving it because we've, we're still in that place where the enemy is telling us things about ourselves that are not true. And we're having a hard time rejecting it. And that's what we need to do. We need to recognize who we are because as long as he keeps us feeling we're not there, we're not able to fully receive the power of his might because we don't know that we can fight. He's keeping you down because he knows your strength and he wants you to not realize your strength. There is nothing more powerful than a praying husband and wife and claiming their family for the Lord. Nothing more powerful because you have authority over your family. You have authority. There's nothing more powerful than a church filled with people who pray. Nothing more powerful than that because you tear down strongholds in your standing. He wants to make you think he has no power in you. So let's, quote, play church. Let's follow a bulletin order. Let's do what we've done for the last 30 years so we can walk out just feeling good. We got to take ground. He's saying, do something with what I've given you. Take it. Take this land. Then he says in verse 13, then the second time he mentions the word stand, with stand. So now the first stand was get ready, gear up in my strength. Okay, it's that attitude, right? It's that willingness to make the choice. Now withstand means you've made the choice, you're ready for the battle, here comes the onslaught. And what happens? You're withstanding now, you're going against, you're resisting, you're now purposely opposing. The enemy came and you pushed back. That's what this withstand now literally means you're becoming aggressive to what is opposing you that's attacking you it's an aggressive movement forward it's not let me plant my feet and stay here it's planting my feet and I'm pushing back I'm pushing back I'm pushing back I'm, I'm not going to let you take any ground that I've conquered in Jesus name I won't have this 
So now you've become aggressive. You've become that violent men. The kingdom of God is taken by violent men. That's what it's referring to. It's, it's that spiritual battle that we need to do to fight for our marriages, for our relationships. Again, it goes back to why Paul brought up marriage, parenting, <laughs> and then other types of relationships, specifically in the realm of employment and those you work with, that those you have to get along with that aren't related to you. Stand. We stand. It's an aggressive movement. It establishes why we need the armor. Because you're going to push back, but you need his armor to push back in his power and in his might to push back. Then, after you've done everything to stand, he brings up the word stand again in verse 13. See, it's slightly different than the very first stand because I want you to, to understand what's actually happening here. You stood, you made the willful choice to, to take up the armor and fight. Then the fight came to you. You've withstood, but as you withstood, you're driving the enemy back. What does that mean? You just took new ground. So now stand on this new ground you just conquered. Make a willful choice that the Lord just give you an opportunity to expand your territory. So now that's your new territory. So now claim it and stand on it. Put your flag on it. You just conquered it. He came at you. Instead of pushing you back, you pushed him forward. You took a few feet of new ground. Stand on that. That's yours now in the name of Jesus. So you've been regrounded in a new position, in a new place that God has given you in him. So now make Make this occupation your new habitation. Make this place you just occupied the place where you now live. Your new occupation is now your habitation. Take it. It's your new border. Then, the fourth time, right as soon as he ends verse 13... He starts verse 14 the same way. When he says stand at verse 13, he says stand in verse 14. And this, again, very similar. So now, you've increased your walls, so to speak, your borders. You've, you've increased your habitation space. So now get ready for the next battle. Make that willful decision to fight again. You know? So now... You prayed, you prayed, you prayed, you fought for your marriage. Your marriage is better. That doesn't mean you're never going to fight again. It means now learn new ways that when the enemy tries to come in, in new avenues, with new stressors, might have been, you know, intimacy issues first, but now he might try to come in through financial issues. So now you've got to learn to reevaluate your battle plan, your willingness to fight, because you got to fight just as hard with intimacy issues as you would need to fight with financial issues, right? So now, look at your game plan, restructure it, but be willing to fight again. So reassert yourself, reorganize yourself, refocus yourself, because it's going to happen. You don't just win the battle, claim the territory, and you're done. Think about that. It doesn't work that way. Think about the kids you're raising. You might get them off drugs, prayed the wall down, pr all, drugs, but then they get into a dating relationship and next thing you know, now they're sinking deep into depression because they've been hurt by someone they love. Guess what? It's a, it's a battle, but it's different. So now you got to take that ground. Spirit of depression, you can't take my child from me. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I anoint his room. I anoint his bed. I declare a garment of praise over the sp spirit of heaviness that's upon him. And you start fighting that way. You get the willingness now to start fighting in the next level, in the next way. The battle before the battle. The willingness to, to keep going. 
and fight because that's where it takes place. This is how you get there, by being armored up, help to get to this place. You cannot get there without your armor, but you got to be willing to do the fight and willing to put on the armor to f- because you can't do it. So he says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. What is the power of his might? His power, power of his might is declared in the pieces of his armor. And we'll get into that another time, the specific pieces. But this, it's described, which includes, and this is where we fail, praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit, which is the very last piece of the armor he tells us to put on. You know, and then praying always in verse 18, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Because when you pray in the Spirit, your heavenly language, you're tuned in to what is going on spiritually. You're connected deeper, at a deeper, more intimate level with heaven. Therefore, you become sensitive to the heart of heaven, the heart of God, and He's making you aware of what's happening around you. That's important. So therefore and I'm going to put this in quotes, you are standing here because you were clothed with, and I'm going to just read this as we close, having girded your waist with, a, with truth, belt of truth, having put on breastplate of, of righteousness, belt of truth, whose truth? Not my truth, the word of God. Whose righteousness that I put on? I'm clothed. My my righteousness, the word of God says, is filthy rags. But he clothes me in his righteousness, which makes me in right standing with him. And shod my feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. His peace that you carry, you walk forward in it. You move forward. It's a forward trajectory. It's not, oh, I've got peace on my feet, so I'll just kind of wiggle around right here. It's, I walk in peace. I walk in peace. I operate from a place of peace. My decisions are coming forth from a place of peace in my heart. That's where it is. I'm not reacting. I'm not responding. I am taking. I am moving. Above all, the shield of faith. Yeah, Lord, I'm trusting in your promises, in what your word says. I may not see it right now, but your word says to declare it and pray it as is. Because it's your heart. It's your heart that all come to know, saving knowledge of your grace. Therefore, my child needs to know you. Because it's your heart that my, all know you, and that includes my child. It's your heart that every marriage succeeds. Therefore, my marriage, it's your heart. It succeeds. That's your promises. I'm going to hold on to it, Lord. I'm going to stand on that, Lord. I'm going to fight for that, Lord. So when the enemy tries to feed me lies, huh, they're knocked down with the truth. And then take up the helmet of salvation. I know who I am. That's what that's referring to. I know who I am and whose I am and my position in Christ. My position in Christ. And the sword of the Spirit, I fight with His Word just like Jesus did, which is the Word of God. And then praying always, supplication in the Spirit. So I'm continually receiving battle instructions from my general that my communication is clear and unhindered from my general on high to me on the front lines, even though he's right there fighting with me. He's empowered me. He's equipped me with what I need. So praying in the Spirit keeps me communication. You want to win a battle, you cut off communication with somebody. If the enemy cuts off your communication with the Holy Spirit, you're done. I'm done. 
you keep that communication going in Jesus. I know I threw a lot at you, but right now I feel like I just want to release a passionate heart to want to fight for what is important, number one, to God, and, and that his passions for it become your passion for it. So would you stand right now with me? I want you to just position your heart, your body, however way you need to, in that receiving position to position to just receive what God wants to pour out in you. Lord, first and foremost, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, that you have equipped us with everything we need, including awareness and knowledge of how to fight every battle we come across. So, Father, we ask for the mind of Christ who never wavered moving forward in the things of his dad. Moving forward, whether it was 40 days in the wilderness or the last minute stint in the garden trying to be swayed not to go to the cross. Thank you that you've given us the mind of Christ that is steady and true and we release that here that every battle we're facing, whether it's in our marriage, whether it's with our kids, whether it's in the workplace, with our neighbors, with other family members, Lord, that we make a choice right now, no matter what it looks like, if it has to do with, with drugs, alcohol, hurt, whatever, it does not matter because our fight is in the Spirit. And we fight with you, in you, Holy Spirit. So give us, Father, the passionate desire to fight. And right now what I'm hearing the Holy Spirit say is there are people here right now who they need to make a decision to start fighting within themselves, for themselves. God has given you things or put you in positions or doing things in your life and you because of obstacles you have faced, you quit striving for those things. The enemy's holding you back, guys, from reaching what God has called you to do, what God has destined for you to do, equipped you to do, birthed you to do. So Holy Spirit, we just release a fighting spirit fight for what you have for us God right now Holy Spirit just come guys he did this because he loves you you are so loved right now it doesn't matter what you've been through the enemy wants to tell you whatever you've gone through you're no good and you can't that's a bold faced lie because he's scared of what you can do in Christ He's scared what you can do in Christ. But I got to make that choice to do this. So Lord, thank you because you declare me victorious in you. The battle belongs to you, Lord, and you've allowed me to share in your victory. You have made me more than a conqueror. That's his word, not my words. More than a conqueror in the things of you, Jesus. So thank you, Father. Just release that. I want you to do something different right now as we close. Just put your hand on the person next to you. There's power in our words when we declare in his spirit. And if you're alone, find somebody to stand next to And I want you to just declare over them, just simply say, in the name of Jesus, I just declare the heart of God and the spirit of power that comes from his heart to be released in you, to give you courage, boldness, and confidence 
that you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength in the power of his might be strong in him and I release in you the willingness to want to fight knowing you are victorious in him in Jesus name amen thank you Lord give God glory guys we praise you Lord thank you when you walk out of here today you're walking out in his victory if you receive that if you need help to pray that because you're having trouble receiving that please see somebody see myself see Luke see my wife see Jenny 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 I'm asking people to see you to pray with them if they need help with that